What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode, it is episode number 12, returning today nicely and I'm being run for Ipswich Town, staying clear of the bottom three, an incredible point in the last game against Manchester United as well, might be no wins in three but right now with seven points above the drop zone, already the three wins on the board as well, it's, it's not been a bad start, I'll be honest with you today, loads of games to get through, I'm going to try and get to the official halfway stage of the season, so play the final eight games of the first start of the season where we could be dragged into a bottom three scrap, we could even even be in a European place. Lots to be decided today as we get to the halfway stage. Our first game though, incredibly tough one. Arsenal away in North London at the Emirates where hopefully if we're tired going into the final seconds, we'll be able to hold on unlike the Foxes could on the weekend. Arsenal the first game today. Go on, it's Switch Town. So it's actually no losses in six for it's Switch Town. Granted, four draws in those six games, but Extra point on the board, extra point on the board. It's becoming one of my favourite things to say now. And uh, I'd certainly take one in this game as well against the Gunners. A Saka tries one early. Oh, Murich has to... Oh, what a miss! What a miss! Murich is going to say fumbles it. And Gabriel Martinelli, well, even I'm surprised on the sidelines, has somehow missed an open goal. Well, I don't think anyone saw that coming. That is a shocker of a miss. And that is one of the, the rare things you see happen from the AI on Ultimate. How on earth did he not open the score room? Yeah, I'm expecting it to be, for the most part, one-way traffic this afternoon. So that won't be the only chance that Arsenal get. Probably won't be the only chance Martinelli gets as well. Looking to atone from the earlier miss. Rolls through Saka, and there is the opening goal. May not have scored, but does create Bakayo Saka with the first and Arsenal in front. This is probably going to be, for the most part, one-way traffic this afternoon. Great unbeaten stretch, but it's going to come to an end at some point. Gun is away. Always a tough one. What a big win for Arsenal on the weekend, obviously, with Man City slipping up in the uh, the lunchtime kickoff with a 1 1 draw at St James's. And for them to have let a two goal lead slip against the newly promoted side. Again, a lot of people thinking, is this going to be a, a similar story for Arsenal? But no, pulling it out right at the end with those two goals deep into stoppage time. And as Saka finds Kai, who got one of them, he's just got the second here as well. In my fantasy team, he was captain for me on the weekend as well, so I'm glad he got one of those late goals. Gunners 2 0 up. To be fair, Madsen Mansell was excellent on Saturday, wasn't he? Made some brilliant saves, and it's very rare a goalkeeper concedes four goals, and yet he's contender for man the match. He was sensational. And as Murich ensures we're, we're still in this for now, two minutes before the restart, we're going to need to do what the Foxes did and score two goals. To at least have a chance at drawing this game. But at the moment, it's, it's just all Arsenal. That third is coming. Had it not been for Murich, it would have been game over. How is still only down by two? I don't know. I must say, I think we got away with it against Manchester United. That's where our undefeated run should have ended. We just about scraped a goal of straw. But I knew Lightning wasn't going to strike twice. We wouldn't get away with it again. Because you don't in the Premier League. You don't in top-level football. You might get away with it once, but not two times in a row. No chance. Bakayo Saka gets his second, and that is going to do it. Great unbeaten run for it. Switch six games without loss in the Premier League. Our best run since joining up to the Tractor Boys. But... This, this only went one way, as we predicted. Arsenal end the unbeaten run with a 3-0 win in North London. Our problems away continue as we still search for our first win on the road. But it's at home this season where we've picked up practically all of our points and all three of our wins as well. Let's see if we can get our fourth here as we return to East Anglia. Portman Road still looking like a fortress with no Premier League losses here this season. Let's make sure that's still the case come to the conclusion of this game. Following contest, Chelsea at home. Come on, it's switch down. If you can't win away, then... Just make sure you win at home. I mean, sounds pretty obvious, right? It's one of those where it's like it, every, everyone wants to turn their weakness into a strength, but sometimes there's a limit to how well you can do that. So when that's the case, just focus on your already strong factors, you know, and ours is how good we are in East Anglia. I often find that for a lot of people, it's like, you know, oh, work, work, on your, work on your weakest area. Work on your weakest side of your game. Sometimes it's like, well, yeah, granted, that's, a, that's not a bad strategy. But if you've got a positive, oh, in my opinion, make the strength even stronger. You know, become a specialist in that. We haven't lost at Portman Road all season long. Don't worry about the away form, man. Just keep getting the wins when we're here in East Anglia. As Washington, oh, what a goal that would have been. Only for Emmy Martinez to deny the former Chelsea striker. Bicycle kicks. I can never do them anymore. But that was always a sensational one to open the scoring. Still, 0-0 with a great start from Ipswich. Yeah, what's your strength? You know, find, find out what you're good at. Don't worry about the things you're not good at. Because the truth is, let's be honest here, most people are going to be bad at most things. You know, 
But I'm a firm believer that everyone has a talent in something. I'm a firm believer that everyone is good at at least, you know, one thing is Pepe is denied by Muri. So in my opinion, don't worry about the things you're not very good at. Listen, there's tons of things that I'm not good at. I'm rubbish at practically everything, but find something that you are quite good at as Muric makes the save and pounce on the rebound and just become the best at that as you possibly can be. That's always been my thing. Become a specialist in a certain role. You, you, know, you can't be a superstar at everything, but everyone's good at something. I'm a firm believer in that and just make yourself the best at that as you can be. 28 minutes on the clock, still tied at 0-0. Yeah, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. That's fine. I'll take this. It means we still wouldn't have won in our last five games, but... Oh, Amari. Amari, brilliant. Oh, referee, come on. That's going to be at least a book. That's a shocking foul from behind that. Chilwell booked. I must say, on another day, that could be a straight red. That was a terrible foul. Look at this. Off the ground, from behind. Oh! On another day, you never know, right? Free kick. And David Washington to stand over it. He scored one in the save so far. What a moment this would be for the former Chelsea man. If he can, bend this in from the corner. Oh, roofing in there. Well, our winless run extends, but what also extends is our unbeaten start at Portman Road this season. Bigger picture, man. Bigger picture. Yeah, sure. We still haven't won in our last, I think, five games now, but no one has come to Portman Road and beat us this season. If we can't win away then just make sure we don't lose at home. At the moment, coming to East Anglia, no team can beat us. Well, we are going to need to make some changes, I think, so I want to see how bad an injury was for Amari Hutchinson. It was, oh, Bray, they come. Here they come. Broken toe for Amari. And won't see him again until late February time. Gutting that. Um, here they come. Here they, we were waiting for it, man. We were waiting for these broken toes. The classic career mode injury. So I think, I think what we might have to do then, no goals in our last three games, is change our shape again. And I'm thinking maybe even 4-2-4. 4-2-4, played the lap and Washington together. Why not? Yeah, I like the idea of going 4-2-4 personally. I think this might work quite well. Uh, if we have um, Ducore and Gibbs White together, but I kind of I kind of like the idea of saying to Ducore, like you you just sit back completely. Um, and then for uh, for Gibbs White, if I can get him to kind of go forward a little bit as a box-to-box, -box, work on defense, but also um, get forward to support our front four. I mean, surely at that point, you'd have like five players involved in the build-up. That should do it. In fact, I think in the Premier League, we'll get exploited a bit too much there. So why don't we change it completely instead and just have both of our CM sitting deep, protecting the back four, and just giving the front four complete freedom to attack on their own. You know, we'll have the... Uh, the, the, the DM duo of Johnson and Ducore, both strong DMs, but the front four, they've just got all the freedom in the world to just stay up top and attack with ferocity. I think that's probably better for, for making sure we don't get exploited at the back there. Um, before we do play the following game, which will be Preston away at Deepdale, which really needs to be a win with them rock bottom of the table and only one win all season long. Three more youth scouting updates. Let's see what we've got. Come on, guys. Come on. This has got to be the month where we find that superstar. At the moment, there's some, again, there's some okay players, but I'm just, I'm, you know, you, you know it. I know it. We all know it. There's, there's always that one player you find, you're like, oh, he is the real deal. He is the next superstar from this particular country. Unfortunately, we just haven't found it this year. And the wait continues from England, from Trinidad and Tobago as well. Haven't put anyone in the academy yet. There's a couple of decent young lads up the top, but at the moment, I'm, ju I'm just not finding it. The scouting this year, I have to say, it's so much more difficult. And from Georgia, what I did say there are a couple of players here we'll keep our eyes on. Eduard Kipiani, however, does, to be fair, look really, really good. I think I'll give him one more month's worth of scouting and see how he looks after that. But yeah, really difficult once again. And I think this is a sign of things to come from this year's FC25. No more golden generation every single year. You've really got to look hard to find that diamond in the rough. Yep, following game, Preston away at Deepdale, the newly promoted side. Right now, rock bottom of the table. Heading into this one, though, on a really barren run. No goals in our last three games and no wins in six or seven, I think it is now. This is a gold opportunity to get our first away day victory of the season. And we probably won't get an easier chance than this. Let's make sure we take it. Preston away at Deepdale. Come on, Switch Town. If I can't score, playing 4-2-4 against what is statistically the weakest side in the division. 
I think it's fair to say I've got a few problems. But I feel confident. And it just surely, surely I'll get one today. Preferably two. Or three. But there's the first. Come on! Liam Delap with the opener. It was switch in front. Come on, 4-2-4. Four, four. We've got to get at least two goals tonight. Liam Delap had a brief loan spell at Preston, hence why I showed the respect with a the celebration there. But tonight, don't show any respect in your performance, son. Ah, I want more goals. And he's looking lively early. Clark, wonderful turn, shot blocked and put behind for a corner. It's all it switch, man. It's all it switch. The passing, like I said, he saw he was placed that pass there. It's so much more realistic. You've got to get it right in terms of the power and the accuracy. Otherwise, you're going to misplace it. Jacob Greaves is denied and can't turn in the rebound. It's, it's so much better. I know it can be frustrating when you misplace a pass around the edge, but it's so much more realistic. Yeah, mate, we'll add that. And Ducore. Oh, for goodness. Oh, my goodness. A passing. Dear, oh, dear. Oh, no, no, no. He's onside there. Baited him, baited him. Yes, Muric with the save. And pushes it behind for a corner. <sighs> Hanging on to a one-goal lead, playing a 4-2-4 against the side bottom of the table. This shows you, go on, Clark, get it back, get it back. There we go, there we go. Shows you how hard this game is for me, honestly. But as things stand, we're going to take the win. And I'll take it anywhere we can get it for our first away day victory. Come on, ref, blow that final whistle. Blow that final whistle. Might have to grind out the 1-0, but I'll take it. I will take it. Not exactly how I thought the game was going to go after I got the early opener from Liam Delap, but listen, I ain't had a single away win all season long. I would have taken it anywhere we got it, and we do with the grind out 1-0. Finally, the Tractor Boys get to that destination and get a win on the board as well. Much needed and long overdue as well. You just don't get the help you used to get now. Do you know what I mean? Like You've got to be clinical with your finishing. And your passing's got to be accurate. Otherwise, it's not going to hit the recipient. And the ball's not hitting the back of the net when you shoot as well. So following game, another side in the bottom three. Burnley back at Port Moreau, where we have been better. Back-to-back -back clean sheets. Back-to-back -back games without a loss as well. And now let's try and go on a nice little winning run. The Clarets coming to East Anglia. Golden chance here for a back-to-back -back victory. Come on, it's Witch Town. Win that, win that, win that, win him. And Christiansen back to Gibbs White in a deeper role today. Not really where I want him. With Ben Johnson finding Al Hamadi. And the Iraqi forward finds Dolan. Back into him. Al Hamadi denied. Etienne Green with the save. You know, I do get quite a lot of chances. My finishing just isn't there. You don't get the help like in previous FCs, man. You've got to be clinical. Otherwise, they're going to hit the back of the net. That should have been 1-0. Golden chance burned. Come on, come on, come on, Clark. The lap. This time, this time. Yes! You're going to miss twice. He got me one goal last season. He's got me one goal this season. The Iraqi born forward with the opener. Yeah, do you remember last season when he when he scored that first goal? And we were buzzing. History made. First ever Iraqi player to play and score in the Premier League. And he's just got me a goal. I said this year, I want to keep him as a squad striker. He never complains about a lack of game. So he's just like, boss, if you want to pick me, I'll play. Otherwise, I'm just going to sit on the bench, mate. I don't mind. I'm just ready to be called upon when you ask. And tonight, he's done that with the goal. And a general all-round good performance as well. I love those sort of players. They don't complain about a lack of game time. They just play well when they're called upon. As, oh, that almost clipped in off the post. Still leading by one. Come on, come on, come on. Got to see this out. Got to see this out. Luca Warwick, Coley show Rolls it through. 1-1. One, one. It's just so quick. So quick. And Kalajic with the leveller. Well, I did say playing 4-2-4 means we might get opened up a little bit. That was just sliced open far too easily. 1-1. One, one. Come on. Still still time to find a winning goal. Oh, don't get me wrong. We're still a work in progress. But this is still a disappointing slip up. Two points dropping from our fingers late on in the game. Maybe not late on, but late-ish. And it is, to be fair, no losses in three. But we've, we've got to build wins consistently, man. One here and there isn't going to get us into top ten. That's a disappointing slip up, that. 
just wish I could score more, you know, I really do. And I'm get, I feel like I am getting slightly better, slightly better, but I've, I've got to be better more consistently. That's the thing, man, seriously. But to be fair, I'll take a nil-nil in our following game, that's for sure. Next up, Liverpool away in Anfield in an incredibly tough game here against Arnie's slot side. Liverpool, of course, the first team we faced in the Premier League in the season opener last year. Now we face them away from home, going for what will be our fourth game in a row without a loss. And I'll take the point. Come on, let's switch town. Yeah, once again, struggling with scoring this season. To be fair, though, it is slightly better than last season in terms of a ratio. I mean, oh, big interception there. And it should be one, and it's not a good save by Murich. I mean, you know, Delap's got me two. Washington's got me two. alhamidi has got me one. Gives White as two, I think. It's, it's slightly better than last season. And as Endo fires just wide, how often do I say this? When you're working towards a big objective... I mean, you don't have to take giant leaps forward with every step. Even just a small little tippy-toe step is still progress. You're still technically further than you were last time out. Just don't go back. You don't have to take giant leaps forward. Just don't go back. And there's Diaz. Has me on my toes. Off loads. And Morsi's into intercept. 29 minutes. 29 minutes. Oh, man. How on earth did that slip through to Berardi? We scored the winner here last season with the final touch of the game. And he's probably scored the winner of half an hour to go here as well. We were seconds away last season. I remember at Anfield from crowning a point and then let it go right at the end. Yeah, still half an hour left in this game, but I, I don't think we're going to come back. Haven't been on it. Liverpool are cut above. Yeah, I mean, it's time, but unlike in the previous game, just have not had any chances at all. This is one of those games where it's not the finishing, it's the creativity, it's the problem. As Diaz rifles in a second to hit the dagger and that will do it. Yeah, I mean, you can always analyze it and see, like if you haven't scored, where was the problem? Was it creativity or was it finishing? Sometimes it's the latter, sometimes it's the former. In this game, it was definitely the creativity. Nothing, nothing got going on the offensive end. I can't even blame Al Hamidi up top. He had no service. As Johnson gets away. And it can be, you know, it can be so easy sometimes when a team hasn't scored a goal to say, what was the striker doing? Well, if the striker's not had a touch, you know, he's not had a chance. What, what can you expect? That's a lovely ball through by Leaf, that. And now Clark. A great through ball. And Gibbs White must finish. And does. We have got a goal. Three minutes to go. Can we find a late leveller? And we need the ball back if we are going to get a chance for a leveller. And to be fair, we've got it. This is it. This is it. Remember, come with me. Okay, never mind. Jack Clark! Oh, what a save, my Lord Ashfordy. Oh, we're looking for some great young Georgian talent. One's just made a brilliant save to ensure Liverpool will probably grind out the three points. Last chance to win it. Everyone forward for the corner, apart from Murich. Gives Weiss delivery in to Clark, headed away. And Dolan gets it in. It'll drop to Baggett. Just float it. In it goes. Oh, what a save, my Lord Ashfordy again. Two sensational starts by the giant Georgian and Liverpool hold on to those two points and all three in total. So close to getting a late leveller. Left it too late. That's the problem though. Why weren't we playing like that in the first 85 minutes? We did that for the entire game. We'd have won it in the end ended up losing it. Man, that is, that is gutting, man. You, you don't get many chances to claim points at Anfield. And especially, especially when you're coming back from two goals down. That was so unlucky. I mean, to be fair, though, like I said before, I mean, we're in 10th. Do you know what I mean? We're in 10th right now with three games to go into the halfway stage. 19 points on the board. And we have scored a, a few more goals than we had at this stage last season as well. We're not doing badly. We're really not. And for a side like ours that is still, if not the weakest side in the division, one of the weakest sides in the division, it's not that bad. Bigger picture, we're doing all right. But let's try and bounce back in the following game, going back to East Anglia, West Ham at Portman Road, where we still haven't been beaten all season long in the Premier League. West Ham coming to Portman Road. Let's get back on the winning wagon. Come on, it's Wish Town. Yeah, no losses at home all season long. A few extra goals than last season. Well above the bottom three. I mean, come on, it's not been that bad. Do you know what I mean? That, that's the thing. It's like, great turn by Washington. Great ball by Washington. And the lap denied. I, I think when you've got such grand ambitions, even when it's just slow progress, you can get frustrated about the time it's taking to get good. But you've, you've got to look at the bigger picture. We said this in the last game. Like it's, it's, we're not going backwards. We're going forwards. Gradually, 
but it's still gradual progression no matter what. Obviously, I'd like to score some more goals. And don't get me wrong, I am trying really hard. I am trying my absolute best to get more goals on the board. But it's just tough. It's just really, really tough. Simple as that. It's Ben Johnson, the former hammer, finds Leif Davis. I've got Delap in the middle. I'll try and find him. And Washington ends his goal drought and fires him switch into the lead. Asking you should you'll receive. One more goals. Got another goal. Asking you shall receive. <laughs> oh dear. Form stuttering. Doxy's commentary stuttering. Ipswich leading. That's the most important thing. Come on, the boys. As Ben Johnson finds Gibbs White. Be the dummy runner. Take him away. Morgan almost got the second. As we were so close to a quick fire double. But better. Better. As we still lead by one. Going for the second. Morgan's delivery. Looking for the lap up in the air. And a oh, great save again by Chevalier. Fantastic save. And still only leading by one. But really should be two or three goals up. But it's all it's which. West Ham right now absolutely penned in their own half. When in Washington. Keep, keep hustling. Oh, a terrible pass. Oh, it's got to be. Oh my god, all the time in the world, and somehow I missed the target. I mean, that, that just sums me up in this year's FC, man. I get chances, I really do, but my finishing is, well, that right there is a damning report. It's awful, absolutely awful. I should be about three, four, five goals up here at the break. Instead, we are leading, but it should be my more. My finishing's terrible. Thing is, though, it's, it's going to come in time. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come in time. If you watch my Luton Town crew in my last year... Oh, Washington. Oh, Washington! Oh, what a save! If you watch my Luton Town crew mode last year, it was the same problem. I couldn't score at the start of the FC year, but then I got better. It's the same thing. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. How on earth is it still only 1 0 here, though? Keeps has been on an absolute mad one. You ain't gonna stop that one, man! Come on! Morgan Gibbs White with the dagger. I think third or fourth of the season, and that is that. Ipswich returning to winning ways, and finally, we've got a second goal. We really should have had about six or seven, but you know what? We'll take the wins how they come. Ipswich back to winning ways. Should have been my more, but it's still a big win. Right, let's do two more following game on Christmas Day. Not Boxing Day, but Christmas Day. I've said before, I'm an advocate for this, man. I really do believe that as our country becomes even more multicultural and diverse, which is fantastic, I believe we should have Christmas Day football for those that don't celebrate the holiday. Anyway, Christmas Day football, Bournemouth away in Dorset as we go for back-to-back -back wins and only our second away day victory this season. Let's go get the job done. Come on, it's Witch Town. Yeah, obviously, I'm a massive basketball fan, as you guys know, and the NBA is, is still played on Christmas Day. You've got the Christmas Day NBA games. It's Leaf Davis sent through to surely open the scoring. Go on, son. Smashes it in, top bins, and it's Witch lead. And I'd love to see the Premier League do it as well. Christmas Day football, because not everyone celebrates the holiday. Not everyone celebrates the day. But also, not only that, but like, I mean, you've got to remember, not everyone is overly close to their family. For some people, the holidays can be a bit of a difficult time for them mentally to have something like Premier Premier League football on to watch, you know, either go and see or just watch on the telly. I mean, it's, it's to me, I think it's, 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 a, it's a nice thing to be able to look forward to on either a day which isn't celebrated or can be a bit tricky if you, uh, if you aren't too close to your family. Like in my case, I don't always see my family on, uh, on Christmas Day. That's when the NBA really saves me, you know, and I'm not feeling great. I'll get my own Christmas dinner and um, I'll, I'll, I'll watch the NBA for a few hours. I'd love to see the Premier League do something similar. I love Davis to pieces, man. Like, I really do. Seriously, I was such a massive fan of him last year in the Championship. It's great to see he's doing one in the Premier League too. As Wolfenden. Oh, no. Really? I thought you made a great tackle there. I, I, want, I, want, I must say, I want to see that on a replay, please, Mr. Referee. Because to me, it looked as though he won the ball. Uh, actually, do you know what? Probably... Probably not. Goes in with force. And I'm saying, ah, that's soft. That's soft. But I think it's probably the right call. And it's soon out. Sends Murich the wrong way. And it is 1-1 from the spot. Should be a decent point away. Just if we can hold on to it. 28 minutes to go. Still tied. But Bournemouth now pushing to try and find a second goal for them. And a winner. Alex Scott, the young lad, has his pass cut out. He drops back to Sinistera. There's Enesu now. I'm noticing that this year as well. 50-50 duels and deflections. They often do go back to the opposition. 
Not to be a conspiracy theorist, but I do believe I'm seeing that more this year. You don't get a lot of help with ricochets either. Sometimes you do, sometimes you do, but more often it's in a bit of an imbalance, I would say. But he decides to the challenge, though. Adds to the good challenge. You just don't get the luck like you used to. Well, not quite the Christmas Day present I wanted. Thought we are going to leave with just our second away day victory of the season. In the end, surrendered what would have been three points and end up leaving with none. We'll do one more and uh, we'll end on that. It switched town away from home. Our form is abysmal on the road. And it's Christensen has just become a five-star weak foot left back. I'm now going to retrain to right back. It really doesn't matter. I get asked sometimes, Doxy Boy, does it matter if you play left back at right back? Um, not really. Not, not, not really. As long as they've got the weak foot high enough, then they're okay to play on the other side. They won't have an overall decrease for doing that. Anyway, our final game today at Port Moreau, where we haven't lost all season long in the Premier League. But the only time we have lost here was against Man City in the Carabao Cup. Guess our final opponents today. The league leaders, the champions, Man City, the only team that have came to East Anglia and won this season as we try and get at least a point in our final game of the first half of the season. Come on, it's Wish Town. Yeah, bigger picture. We're doing all right. We're in 10th place right now, which is what the board wanted us to do at the start of the season. And I would have taken as well, top 10. We've got a few more goals than we did at this stage last season. We're still the lowest scorers with 14, but it's it's still slightly better. Like I said, tippy toes, tippy toes, slight progression. But unfortunately, we are going to have, I think, our first loss at Portman Road in the league this season. And it's this team again who beat us in the cup as well. Harlem with the opener, 1 0 Man City. Yep, it's going to take a long time before we can compete with these guys. Make no mistake. Ah. No mistake about it. They're eight clear at the top heading into this game. We could go double digits clear at the halfway stage. They won the title last season. I think they're going to win it again this season as well. Haaland denied by Muir. It's just a, a cut above. That's the best way of putting it, man. In, in this career mode save, they are just a cut above right now. With Echeverry. Oh, what a ball. Foden for two. No, Murich with a save. What a ball that was there. And we are still only down by one, but the problem is we've had no chances at all, really, on the offensive end whatsoever. I just haven't been able to break Man City down. Calvin Phillips, that loan spell of us did him some good because he's been great in the two games we've, uh, we've played against him this season. First in the cup, now in the league. And I just, I just can't, I just cannot break Man City down. Literally have not been able to get a sniff at all. This game is not about my poor finishing. I just have not had a chance. Haaland to make it two. No offloads. And this should be two. And it is indeed. Savinio with the finish. And that will do it. Half an hour to go. There's only one team that can beat it, which is Portman Road. It's these guys. First in the cup, now in the league. And I think with half an hour to go, it's game. Yeah, just a mismatch in quality, really. Let's be honest. Here. Oh, my word. Just one team far better than the other. Simple as that. And, you know, in this RTG, one day we want to get to the level of this Pep Guardiola Man City team. But let me tell you, man, we are a long, long way off that. Delat to our Hamadou. Can we, can we get a consolation goal? As Cameron finds Gibbs White. Go on. Get us something. Morgan. Delap. Oh, just couldn't hit the target. It's been that sort of night. Yep, disappointing to see our unbeaten home start of the season come to an end in our final game today. But there's never any shame by being beaten by Manchester City away or at home. And now we've been beaten by them twice at home. First in the cup and they're in the league. With them right now, top of the table at the halfway stage of only one loss in 19. There's no shame in that sort of result at all. As they're eight clear of Manchester United and ten clear of Chelsea in third. Arsenal wrap up the top four on goal difference ahead of Liverpool with Spurs in sixth and Newcastle in seventh. It's Town, though, right now, 11 places in the table, 5 wins in 19, and 22 points on the board. Granted, still problems going forward, but it's still gradual improvement on last season. 14 so far, and again, 22 points means that at the end of the season, if we had the same sort of first half, we'd have 44. That'll be more than last season, and I'll certainly take 11th place as well. But that'll do it for today's episode of Career guys. Big fan of your fortune. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please like. Sure you'll have a fantastic day. I'll return in the next one with more games in the league, the January window opening, and the FA Cup third round against Swansea. Have a great day, much love, and I'll see you for the next episode very soon.